welcome to the Trial Site News Podcast. And I'm Erin, your host. And today we have an amazing guest, Dr. Mari Matrani. And she's going to talk about um, this really cool study. I actually just read through it this week um, on this cool product. So thank you, Mari, so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Erin. Absolutely. And where are you located? Just so... So our headquarters are in Miami, uh, Florida, but I am right now in Colorado. We oh, are nice. opening a new a new place in Colorado, so this is where I am. <laughs> okay, so maybe let's start there. Do you mind um, just telling our viewers a little bit about you and the company that you work for? Yes, of course. So um, I am the chief science officer of Organicell Regenerative Medicine. We are a public biopharmaceutical company working and studying, developing, manufacturing um, regenerative medicine, right? Uh, from, from sources, our background brings us our over 13 years of working with uh, stem cells. We started working with adult autologous stem cells, and then progressed into, a, we were looking for a better source of stem cells. We understood the power of these regenerative cells um, back, uh, as I'm saying, over 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're looking always for a better source. So the, uh, the results for the patients were more consistent. Uh, and that landed us into perinatal tissue derived cells. And perinatal tissue is the tissue that's between the mom and the baby, that tissue that lets the baby thrive, that it does not have the information 100% of the baby or the mom, because that's the one that shields uh, the baby and let mom keep that different individual in that womb for nine months. So we discovered that the source of better cells or stem cells or regenerative cells are from that source. So we went into finding what are stem cells in the amniotic membrane, in the Wharton's jelly, in the, in the fluid. And so we went through a process of discovering what is the best source to find this kind of cells. That's cool. Okay. I was actually, yeah, that's really neat. And, that's fascinating. But um, then we, we gave it one more step because we understood that um, the whole scientific community understood that the power of the stem cells comes from the messaging that they are secreting, their paracrine factors that they're secreting. And we decided to focus now 100% on those messages that are being sent from the stem cells. And the easiest way to, to name them are exosomes or extracellular vesicles that are carrying a specific message for regeneration. So our, our company right now is focused 100% on working in these extracellular vesicles or exosomes. Um, that's, that sounds amazing. That sounds super cool. Um, so I read this, this um, study on Zofin. Am I saying that right? Zofin. So, I'm sorry, Zofin. Yeah, Zofin. <laughs> Zofin, everyone. Okay. Um, so, and, and you talked about the, the amniotic fluid a little bit, but I guess, um, and, and you used this, you tried it in three seriously ill COVID-19 patients, which was yeah. super interesting. So, yeah, so before we get into that, can you explain, and I know you just kind of explained a little bit about the background, but just um, again, what is it, how did you make this product? Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, we uh, decided to shift our focus into not uh, the cells themselves, but everything that the cells uh, secrete. And um, Sofin is a biologic that is com composed by the extracellular vesicles, proteins, and nanoparticles that are present in a full-term amniotic fluid. So usually when people hear amniotic fluid or they hear stem cells from the perinatal derived tissue, they're always scared of, are they aborted fetuses or is it an unethical product? So just to assure, and, and I'd love to try to educate a little bit more, this, we follow all FDA criteria to uh, make sure that those donors that are donating a full term amniotic fluid, they're only in C-sections, in hospitals that have been qualified, that neither the mom or the baby are, are getting injured. This is normally a product, a medical discard or medical waste product that will usually go to the garbage, right? But we found the um, amazing availability of 
message that are just there in the product. So what we do in, in our laboratory is make sure that we, um, let's say centrifuge clean the steel and just leave the extracellular vesicles, the nanoparticles and proteins that are left from uh, that amniotic fluid in full, full term. How did you get that to, hey, let's try this out in these three critically ill COVID-19 patients? Yeah, so before the pandemic hit, uh, our whole, um, uh, you know, the pipeline that we've had for our studies have been focused in, in two different brackets. One is uh, lung injury, specifically for COPD, and then um, our osteoarthritis model. So for oh. our lung injury model, we have been studying and we've conducted uh, several trials uh, that we're looking specifically in lung injury and how can our product help alveolar structure, anti-inflammatory properties. So when the pandemic hit, we understood that uh, this severe acute dist distress respiratory syndrome that is produced due to the virus was very similar to our BPD model, which is the bronchopulmonary dysplasia model that we were running for quite a while. So we had all of the information ready to present uh, for our trial for COPD and decided to shift or pivot then mm. to, uh, to try to help find a way to treat patients that already are actively um, infected with a virus, right? And that have been progressed into, you know, uh, we, we have trials. So we, we got approval for a moderate to severe um, acute distress respiratory syndrome, or it's due to COVID-19. And while we were doing everything to set up the trial, we started seeing the need of treating individual patients and got contact by many of our physicians that are, uh, are part of our advisory board members that were actively seeing patients. And you can only imagine what has our healthcare system gone through this pandemic. It is devastating to see patients progressively decrease throughout the days with this virus. So uh, we, uh, th there is this route called, uh, um, you know, the emergency compassionate route for INDs where you apply to FDA for these trials for single patients. So the, the trial that you are re referring to is our latest publication, which we disclose all the information about these three severely ill patients in ICU. Um, our drug, after all this one year of study, we understand that the fastest we get to treat the patients, the better it is. And nevertheless, we did uh, treat, we have treated different brackets of severity of COVID. Um, that's really, that's really interesting. Now, obviously, so you, there was three people. So it's like kind of like a case write up, not, not like a large trial here. Right. So well, what were, it's, it's a case report, right? A case report, just so everyone is clear. It's a case report. Um, and there was three people. And so obviously that that's not like a big amount. So what, what were you guys looking for in terms of primary outcomes? Well, so first and foremost, all of, all of our trials as of right now, as we have our phase one, phase two, is uh, first is safety. And that's what we're looking for. And safety is what we are, we're proving. And now we are advancing and about to file for our phase Two, uh, which will start looking for efficacy, right? Um, again, this was a case report, but nevertheless, we have treated 18 patients under EIND. We have started our, our phase one, phase two, and have completed our expanded access as well. So all of these trials at the beginning always look only for efficacy and availability or uh, being able to receive the drug to those patients. And we have definitely met the, that first and foremost, most important a safety uh, safety. measurement. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And in terms, you, you mentioned that you treated um, 18 patients, you, you, you gave them um, uh, Zofin. I wanna say Zofin for some reason, Zofin. Um, <laughs> Um, so what what did you see? Or, um, any uh, objective measures in, in, in terms of improvements, that, that kind of thing? Yeah, so for every single case, what we have done 
uh, first and foremost safety, but then we are looking for inflammatory biomarkers because that is where we we know or uh, we are hypothesizing that their drug is going to help um, the immunomodulatory and the anti-inflammatory properties of the drug is what we are trying to measure. So um, on the uh, on this International Stem Cell and Gene uh, Society conference, we have presented also this, uh, one of the most important biomarkers that you can track is CRP in terms of inflammatory response and how from these 18 patients that had elevated CRP, they all decrease at the end of this 30 days. So it is a 30-day trial that we, we have followed for every single uh, patient that we have treated um, where we track those biomarkers. So that is what we are uh, looking for. Besides safety, we are definitely looking. So we have chest x-rays and we have many other markers that we're looking to make sure that uh, their safety and then also this uh, inflammatory biomarkers that can tell us how inflamed the body was, is, and ends up being. Um, absolutely. And you mentioned that, and obviously these patients, you know, these patients, well, the ones in the, in the, in the study I read about, they were really ill, ill. Um, they were getting, um, a bunch of other care. And so I know it's hard, it's, it's hard to, to say, well, this, it was this drug, but obviously you can say it's safe. There was no adverse reactions that you guys noticed. Um, is there, are there plans to test it against a placebo down the road or? So definitely. Yeah. As we are 100% focused on demonstrating this the scientific way, which is a placebo-controlled uh, randomized um, trial, which was approved, and we are conducting that trial. Again, we have also uh, got approval for an expanded access. So uh, that's what I'm saying. We are in, in the right now, as, as we speak, uh, really applying for that phase two as we've already collected enough uh, data from our phase one to move into our phase two. Um, so that, that's where we are. We, You're we recruiting. Are looking for, You're at, at, we, are, <laughs> we are looking for, um, you know, and we, we understand the, the, the scientific way and, and we, sure. we wanna make sure that we, we prove it that way. Um, so what, is, that, is that, those are the next steps, the, um, more experimental work? Um, and or it's yeah, continuing the phases. Yes, continuing um, the so, phases. So now uh, we will be applying for phase two, mm -hmm. and, and then um, once we get the data for phase two, we can then uh, proceed for phase three. Uh, but soaping, as I, as I was mentioned at the beginning, is not only being studied for COVID. That was my next oh. question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like where where else might this apply? Yeah. So. Because the, the, the drug is not composed with for, by one specific compound, um, and it has, and our administration of the drug is intravenous, it has a multi-organ, multi-systemic approach on inflammation. So our, our pipeline was designed for COPD, osteoarthritis, and other things are, are uh, we are working uh, for specific cardiac disease uh, like hep pef, but um, are we already, after this year of COVID, we have presented to FDA our trial for COPD and osteoarthritis. Both have been granted and we are actively working to set up those trials and, and, and start as well. That's it. Well, that, that sounds really amazing. Um, it sounds promising. It seems really cool. And I guess, um, Last question, if anyone is interested in learning more about these trials, um, the work you guys do, can, uh, where can they go to find that information? Yeah, so our website is organicell.com. You can find uh, all of the information that we are producing. You know, we're a public company, so everything is, is there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, follow, follow, follow the journey. <laughs> we are follow, working really follow, hard. Follow the journey. And you just... You mentioned you're in Colorado and you guys are opening a new yeah, place. Yes, so we are. Yes, we, cool. we are expanding. Um, and uh, Colorado has, uh, as of right now, been the place where we are uh, looking to expand our laboratory or, or to produce awesome. for this trial. Yeah, and you're be you're getting out of all the heat on the, the East Coast. <laughs> I think, I think. I'm, I'm in New York. It's like 93 degrees here. But um, anyways... Yeah. 
Mari, thank you so much. Um, is, if there's anything else you want to add that you feel is important, you know, feel free. Um, yeah, you know, uh, what I did not uh, touch base is that we are actively looking for that approval on the long haulers, the COVID long oh. haulers, which is oh. a group that has been kind of forgotten now that it's yeah. one year of the pandemic, there's more heat about it, but there's yeah. no approved therapeutics for long haulers. And we are actively working with FDA for that approval. So um, to an end, that's so cool. we will that's, have great, yeah. great news about that uh, because it's, yeah. it's a group that needs to know that uh, us physicians, us scientists are working hard to, to look for a solution. Absolutely. And some of those symptoms are lasting months. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, uh, I was talking to my friend the other day and he still hasn't had, he didn't get a sense of smell or taste back yet. And it's been like six months. I'm like, good Lord. And, and there's uh, more significant uh, complications like cardiac inflammatory yeah. complications that patients didn't know that they had. And we're talking about young patients that yeah. have mental fog, for example, or that mental fog. You know, yeah. So there's there there is a, a bunch of other things that we are looking for it, and we are we're actively wait, working for it. Well, that's really interesting, fascinating stuff. Um, definitely keep us in touch and um, keep us updated and and that sort yeah. of thing. And thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Erin, for your time. Absolutely.